I mean, one, one of the great privileges of this event is that uh, we're able to uh, uh, present an award to uh, somebody who we name as the New Londoner of the Year, somebody who's actually uh, made a great contribution to the quality of the environment, to the life and culture of the city. And uh, uh, when I was thinking about this, it didn't seem to be a hard decision, really, because if you think, you know, what is London's biggest problem at the moment? And that is delivering homes in the required numbers. And who has been responsible for delivering more homes than anybody else? And uh, uh, so I thought, uh, uh, went through a list, and uh, our London of the Year, working through his various sainted companies of St. James, St. Edward, St. George, St. William, as well as, of course, Barclay, He's been delivering 1,250 homes at Woolwich Arsenal, 4,000 homes, Kidbrook, 5,000 homes, Woodbury Down, uh, 1,700 homes in Southwark, and 17,000 homes to come uh, working with the national grid on various developments across the capital. So uh, please welcome to the stage our new Londoner of the Year, 2016, Tony Pidgeley. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it's not very often I'm nervous, but it would be fair to say in such a historic building, I do feel nervous. So I have three speeches. I have one on Brexit. I have a simple thank you. And I can talk about collaboration and good architecture. So which would you like? <laughs> I think Brexit's a very interesting debate. <laughs> Look, I, I have to declare, I was very much for remaining. My heart tells me I want to be very British. <laughs> Equally, though, I think we now have to accept that people have voted. We in our offices always thought it was a great risk because we think that London is very sophisticated, we tend to live somewhat for London, we understand London, but we do move around the country and there is no doubt about it, we have a lot of very disinfected working class people who, and, and it was a protest vote. That said though, I mean, it's very interesting. We stayed up all night and watched the result at Barclay. Friday morning, everybody was in the office and we have to get on with life. So Barclay got on with life Friday morning and I think we have a great city, I think we're a great nation and we have to accept it, and I wish that our politicians would get on with it. I wish the Tories would do a simple thing and put uh, Theresa May in charge. We need certainty, we need a period of stability, and we just need to be allowed to get on with it because we're out of Europe now and we have to accept it. You know, the, the negotiations may take some time, but you know, we need certainty, you know, and equally with companies. We all touch the detail, each and every one of you. That's what you've seen today with Art Detective, it's great. But our detail was in place by midday Friday. Our chief exec was on a jet. He went to China. I know we're not supposed to sell abroad, but we do. I mean, it, it, it cash flows our business, right? Our MDs were all around our show units. And you know, to be candid about it, we're not having quite as bad a time as everybody wants us to say. It's not going to be easy, it's not, it's not simple, but for each and every one of you, you have to run a business. Do we sack our people? That was the easy choice. Do we make half our staff redundant, or do we get on with it? You know, and I think we've got a lot to celebrate in this country, and I think we should be proud of it. And my ploy to the politicians and to the, 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 the press is, you know, let's be proud of Britain and let's get on with it. What, I have one last request too. Could they please take off stamp duty? Theresa May said that austerity needs to be put behind us. We need London to be a good field fact. We need to get going forward. But enough on Brexit, but you know, life is going to get on with it. Peter, I'd like to thank you. And we've had our moments and our discussions about architecture over the years, but I truly am honored and humbled to be here today to, to, to receive such an award. 
particularly in front of so many friends and colleagues. And, you know, like any developer, we take a fair amount of criticism sometimes for what we do. But, you know, I think there's an awful lot of good and housing should be a force for good. What we've achieved over the last decades with architecture, we should applaud ourselves. I mean, take a moment. You've made enough noise all day. Give yourselves a clap. Come on. I've been very happy and very proud to work with a number of you. I'm very proud to have played a small part in what we've achieved in London and its success over the last few decades. London is a fantastic city. It's a world class city and we should celebrate this. Good architecture and creating homes and additionality we need should be considered a force for good and we should be allowed to get on with the excellent work you've seen here today and what we're achieving. London is the economical engine of this country. It is the financial centre of the world. We have the right timeline. It is the world's greatest legal system. We have the right language at the end of the day. We have the right culture. We have the theatres. We have the parks. We have the museums. You know, let's not lose sight of just how fantastic and wonderful this city is. Of course, we're going to face challenges, not least the big elephant in the room for us today, and we're happy to share it, is labour. When I was 20 years of age, I could build a house in 20 weeks. I can't build a house today in 40 weeks, try as I try. We have 16,000 people out there somewhere working for us today, and we need 22,000. We try as I try, we can never get those numbers up. 60% of that labour force, and I hate to stand and say this, comes out of Europe. You know, and so we need, there are going to be some challenges with this labour. But, you know, it's this time, and you all see it, you're all at the sharp end of it, this cost and, and, and this, these prelims and overheads that go on. When it takes us twice as long to build a house as it should do, that we used to do, there's something wrong with our labour force and our training skills and what we do, and we've got to work with it. We need additionality. We need homes that are affordable. And again, I go back to taxes. You know, be it 106, be it seals, perhaps out we make too much profit, make many things, but when you look at what happens to land prices and it is part of the community, we, if we care about our people and if we want to have our, our bus drivers, our nurses, you know, our fire engineer, our policemen close, right, I mean, we tend to buy many sites. We buy single story, we just bought a number of police stations. Why don't they put some police houses back there? Why don't the Met Police, when it sells off the Pill Centre, which is 3,000 homes, do a nomination agreement and put back 100 homes to the police officers? We talk about it, but we've got this thing in society called best value. You know, the public sector don't stop talking about best value. Everything's best value. You know, everything's about the best pound and the last pound. Let's talk about what you're here today for. Good architects, good landscaping, good soft, soft landscaping, art landscaping, placemaking equals communities. What do communities equal? People. If you talk to us about some of the things that we do, why, why are we good at it? We just go and talk to the people. When we run Kidbrook, what did we do? We went down there and talked to the people. That's all we do is talk to the people. We listen to what they want. We accommodate them. In the bigger picture of a billion pound development, to think about the storage and the room sizes and what people want is not the challenge. Right? It's part of creating a community. So, you know, we have great people, we have great communities. We need certainty, we need to be bold, we need to be positive, we need to generate jobs. Right? And we need to face into this housing crisis and make sure that we understand it and get it right. You know, I mean, I've been talking to James Murray an awful lot recently, and I, um, you know, and I like the new mayor, I think they're going to be pragmatic, they're open for business, and they're listening, and I see an awful lot of them. But the one thing that's in their gift is the public land. If they want to build additionality, build on their public land. Do not zone it. Do not let the prices go up. Do not let it become unaffordable, right? Deliver it. And that's what this is all about. So we need to be bold. We need to keep there. Government again, please take a decision on Heathrow. You know, Crosswell 2, we need it. We need those things. We never talk about Crossrail 1. I mean, I just see what Canary, uh, Canary Wharf did. I think that Crossrail and what it did to Woolwich Arsenal and what it's doing to places 
like Southall. We bought a site two years ago at Southall. We didn't pay a lot of money for it, right? It's got three and a half thousand houses on it. Two years later, we haven't laid a brick. Why? We're bogged down in bureaucracy, bureaucracy at the end of the day. Crossrail's going there. The site's been derelict for 30 years. How would you as an audience today believe we could have a site in West London where we put three and a half thousand hours of planning and we can't get on with it? You know, that's what we're talking about, right? So I don't think land is the challenge. I think the skills are the challenge. But we need that to go forward. And I have one last request and then I'll move on, right? It's very simple. I believe that stamp duty, and I touched it on earlier, is, is, a, is a very simple debate. It's a tax on supply. It's as simple as that. It's not on demand. At the bottom end, where we want, you know, people want to buy homes, the price, and we're in the business, we're, we live it day by day. The prices are going up. So the very end where they want to out the price going, they've stopped the top end in London, and somebody has, they've stopped it. Why would you pay 15%? Are we open for business? Are we a diverse city? Are we the world's best city? If we are, the politicians have to recognise it. And we've just proved to our Chancellor that he's actually £170 million worse off. So that's a great piece of taxation, isn't it? So, but, you know, to close, really, I think that it is about good architecture. It is about place-making. You know, it is about modern methods of construction. I mean, most of the estates that we talk about and most of you know we work on, they're 30 years old. Kidbrook was built 30 years ago. We pulled it down. You know, we've got to come up with construction that stands the test of time. We've got to have the skills to build places. We have got to build communities. And any of you are welcome to go and look at Kidbrook. We've got a centre down there where we let people come and look at it. We talk about it. And you can see where it is. We have got people down there that's lived side by side with what we like to call social housing and what we call private housing. You cannot tell the difference. They are part of the community. They sit on the management companies. And we prove this on a state after a state after state. So all it is about is respect, saying please and thank you. And thank you, and I'm very honored to accept this reward. And thank you for all the excellent work you've done, and you should rejoice over it. Thank you very much.